The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. This problem of intelligence, it's one of these problems that mankind has been busy with it for the last 2,000 years or so. But 50 years ago or so, there was uh, um, the start of artificial intelligence. It was a conference in Dartmouth, 62 or so, um, with people like John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky, who coined the term artificial intelligence. And at that time, um, you know, progress was made. Progress has been made, especially in the last 20 years. I'll go through it. but. Uh, um, but they relied really only on computer science and common sense. And in the meantime, there are all these other disciplines which have made a lot of progress and are very likely to play a key role in uh, um, this re the search for answers to the problem of intelligence. So um, it was obvious that we needed different expertises, not only in computer science, but in other ones. And so this was the people that we put together from different labs, from neuroscience, from computer science, from cognitive science, and from a number of institutions in the US, um, especially MIT and Harvard. Let me tell you a, a bit more about um, the, the background here, this idea of merging uh, brain research and uh, computer science. Um, in the quest to understand intelligence. Part of the reason for this was um, progress and convergence we saw between different disciplines, and one of them was progress in AI. And this started really with Deep Blue, I guess it was called at the time, the um, machine, IBM, that managed to beat Kasparov at chess uh, for the World Championship. And then, of course, there was Watson beating champions in jeopardy, and things like uh, drones able to land on aircraft carriers. So that's the most difficult thing for a pilot to do. And, uh, and in the meantime, things have continued to go pretty fast. This was um, the cover of Nature probably eight months ago or so. DeepMind, which is one of our industrial partners in the center, has developed an artificial intelligence called DeepQ, I think, um, that learned to play, better than humans, uh, 49 classical Atari games uh, by itself. And, uh, and this was uh, two or three months ago, a cover of a nature supplement on artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is showing a system by Mobileye, an old, this is an old video, um, so that gives vision to cars. There is a camera looking outside and is able to brake and accelerate when needed. There have been, the, uh, there are, and there will be a lot of significant advances in AI. I think it's a golden age 
for intelligent applications. You know, if people want to make a lot of money with useful things, that's the time. Uh, but this is kind of engineering, interesting one, but engineering. Um, we are still very far from understanding how people can answer questions about images. This is one of the main focus in uh, uh, the center, really. Uh, how does your brain answer simple questions about uh, this image, uh, about what is there, you know, what is this, who is this person, um, what is she doing, what is she thinking, please tell me a story about this, what's going on, you know, because you should. <laughs> And uh, uh, so, and we would like to know, to have a system that does that, but also to know how our brain does it, right? So that, that's the science part. It's not enough to have, uh, uh, it's not enough to pass the Turing test, of this case, to have a system that does it. We want to have a system that does it how, in the same way as our brain does it. And we want to compare you know, what your model, your, our system, with measurements on the brain of people or monkeys or so during the same task. So, so that's what we call Turing plus plus questions. And part of the rationale about it is, this is kind of a more philosophical discussion. I personally think that it's very difficult to have a definition of intelligence in general. There are many different forms of intelligence. What we can ask is uh, questions about what is human intelligence, because we can study that, right? Um, you know, is, uh, I don't know, the ENIAC computers in the 50s more or less intelligent than a person? You know, it can do things a person cannot do, uh, and so on. There are certain things ants or bees do are pretty amazing. Uh, is this intelligence? Yeah, in a certain sense it is. But, uh, so I think in terms of a well-defined question, the real question is about human intelligence. And so, um, and so that's what, from the scientific part, we are focused on. And we would like to, to be able to answer how people do un understand images. We start with vision. We are not limited eventually to vision, but in the first five years of the center, that's the main focus. Um, answer question about images. And uh, we want to, to understand how the answer are produced by our brain at the computational, psychophysical, and uh, neural level. It's ambitious. Um, and I think there are probably, in terms of having all these different levels, you know, levels of uh, um, really understanding um, um, from the wetware, the neuroscience, to the behavior, um, we, we are not yet at the point in which we can answer all those kind of questions at all these different levels. But some. We are. One example is who is there. It's um, essentially face recognition. And this is a, a interesting problem because we know from work originally in the monkeys and then in, uh, with fMRI in humans, uh, shown here parts of the brains of cortex which are involved in face recognition, in face perception, and then uh, it's possible to um, identify homolog regions in the monkey and record from, from the different patches in the monkeys, um, each one probably around 100,000 neurons, maybe 200,000 or so, and look at their properties when the monkeys is looking at face um, and make models of what's going on and, uh, of course, we want these models to, um, to respect the neural data, ideally the fMRI data, 
and do the job of recognizing faces as well as human do. Um, so we are getting there. Um, I'm not saying we have the answer, but we have um, uh, at least models that can be tested at all these diff different levels. So that's kind of the ideal situation from the point of view of what we want to do in the center. Now, as I said, not all problems are mature at this, in this, at this level. There are certain, like telling a story, we don't know exactly, we cannot record yet from neurons in the monkey when the monkey is telling a story because the monkey was not been able to tell a story, right? And so, so there, are, there are other questions that are not as advanced as, as this one, but uh, other type of studies can be done on them, should be done, and this is all what we will hear about.